This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, in this series of lectures, we're going to look at the chapter on inventories. As always, I hope you've got the notes uh, printed out and in front of you. Uh, but quite a few things going on here. And the first thing uh, I'll get out of the way uh, is the accounting entries, which are actually very, very simple. But to make sense of them, I'm going to work through three tiny examples, examples in the notes. Uh, and by the time we've done all three, uh, then uh, you'll have all the entries that we actually need. Uh, first of all, example one. In year one, the first year of trading, a business had purchases of 20,000 and sales of 30,000. And despite what the chapter's called, here yeah, there was no inventory at the end of the period. And it says A, show the trading account of the business uh, for year one, in a form suitable presentation of the owners. It means let's do a pretty trading account, the first bit of the statement of profit or loss. Well, I hope absolutely no problem to get the, that first bit, the gross profit. We take the sales which were 30,000. We subtract the cost of the sales, uh, well, that was the purchases of 20,000, and therefore the gross profit is 10,000. And of course then in the full statement of profit or loss you've got all the various expenses. But that's the gross profit in the first year. Part B says, now let's show how the double entry worked. We did all this before in an earlier chapter. But let's do it all over again. Let's play bookkeeper and accountant. First of all, we made purchases of 20,000. The double entry, credit cash or payables, debit purchases 20,000. We make sales of 30, debit cash or receivables, credit sales 30. That's all the bookkeeper will have done. The bookkeeper records every purchase, every sale. At the end of the year, the accountant comes. Of course, sales appear in the statement of profit or loss, so move them. Debit sales, credit statement of profit or loss. And the balance on the sales account is zero, ready for next year. And similarly purchases, they appear in the statement of profit or loss. Credit purchases, debit statement of profit or loss. 20,000. And the purchases account, again, is clear, ready to record next year's purchases. And finally, the balance on the statement of profit or loss. Is, of course, the profit for the year. And in real life, we'd have done the double entry first, and then we rewrite the statement in the pretty layout. So fine, I mean, that was nothing new. That was way back to chapter three, I think it was. But nothing new there. But let's move on to example two. And this time it's the same business, but in the second year, we bought goods, purchases for 25,000. We made sales of 34, but this time there was inventory left at the end of the period of 4,000. So again, let's show what we want to appear in the trading account, and then let's do the debits, credits. Uh, the trading account, 
the sales, 34,000. We want to subtract the cost of sales. Well, to get the cost of what we sold, we know what we bought, the purchases were 25,000. But that's the total cost of everything we bought. But here, not all of it was sold. Because although we bought goods for 25, some of them were still left in inventory at the end. There were 4,000 left behind. And if you'd bought 25, and if 4,000 of them weren't sold, only the remaining 21 were sold. To get the cost of sales, we subtract the closing inventory, the inventory at the end of the year. So after the 25 bought, 4,000 were still there. Only the remaining 21,000 were sold. They were sold for 34,000 and therefore the profit was 13,000. So that's what we want to achieve. But again, now let's play at being bookkeeper and accountant and see how we actually arrive at that. Back to the beginning. We buy goods for 25. Well, bookkeeper, uh, credit, cash, debit, purchases, 25. We sell goods for 34. Debit, cash, credit, sales, 34. And again, that's all the bookkeeper will have done. At the end of the year, the accountant appears. Sales appear in the statement of profit or loss. So debit sales, credit statement of profit or loss. And the sales account is clear, ready to record next year's sales. Purchases. They appear in the statement, so credit purchases, debit statement of profit or loss. $25,000, the purchases account, zero balance, ready to list next year's purchases. So that's exactly what we did last time, what we did in the earlier chapter. But of course, we've now got a problem. And in fact, two problems. One problem is that if we were to stop there, there's a balance on statement of profit or loss of 9,000. And of course, the profit isn't 9,000 at all. The profit is 13. The other problem is that, of course, we do have inventory at the end of 4,000. And inventory is an asset which appears in the Statement of Financial Position. But the Statement of Financial Position is a list of the balances on the accounts. And we've no balance there for inventory. You can't list a balance if there isn't one. Well, it's up to the accountant to sort it out. What balance do we need for inventory? We need a balance of 4,000. And so the accountant opens an account for inventory and puts 4,000 on it. Now, do we need a debit balance or a credit balance? Inventory is an asset. Assets are always debit balances. Car was a debit balance, receivables are a debit balance, and so on. And so the accountant opens an account for inventory debits it with 4,000. We've now got the balance we want for the statement of financial position. We need a double entry. The double entry, credit, statement of profit or loss. Debit inventory, credit, statement of profit or loss. And things now work beautifully. 
because what balance is left on the statement of profit or loss which goes to the uh, owner the root of capital but there is the correct profit we know 13,000 uh, what about inventory well, with a debit balance and asset, we list it as a current asset in the statement of financial position. And as always, we'll leave a balance there. So it's that one entry at the end of the year, and it makes everything run. However, for completeness, one last example, example three. Now it's the same business but in the following year, in the third year, and so do remember, at the end of uh, the second year, we did have a purchases account, but the balance there was zero at the end of the year. And similarly, a sales account, but again, the balance was zero. But we've now got an inventory account and at the end of this second year, we left a balance of 4,000. All right, however, before we do double entries, let's again, for the example three, I'll come back to the double entries, but let's again show a trading account. In year three, the business had purchased of 38,000 and made sales of 50. There was inventory at the end of the year of 6,000. Uh, but remember, it does carry on from example two. Uh, so example two had 4,000 inventory at the end. So in the third year, we started the year with 4,000 in inventory. Well, the trading account, the sales, 50,000. Subtract the cost of sales. Well, remember, in our warehouse, at the end of last year, the beginning of this year, we already had inventory, opening inventory. At the end of last year, 4,000. So the opening inventory at the start of this year, there was 4,000 in our warehouse. This year, we bought goods. For 38,000. So we've now got a total of 42,000 that we're hoping to sell. Did we sell them all? No, because at the end of the period, some of it was unsold, closing inventory. So of the 42,000 we had, 6,000 was still there. Only the remaining 36,000 was sold. And therefore the gross profit was 14. All right, for the last time though, let's now play at bookkeeper and accountant and see how we'd arrive at that. Remember, at the beginning of this third year, zero balance on purchases, zero balance on sales, a debit balance of 4,000 on inventory. Off we go. We buy goods for 38. Bookkeeper, credit, cash, debit, purchases, 38,000. We sell goods for 50. Debit, cash, credit, sales, 50,000. That's all the bookkeeper will have done. That's all the bookkeeper did in the earlier chapter. And so at the end of the year, those are the balances on the accounts. And note, inventories have been sitting there all year. We put that there at the end of last year, and it's still sitting there at the end of this year. The accountant arrives and closes off the accounts. Sales appear in the statement of profit or loss. 
move them. Same as always, debit sales, credits tend to profit or loss, 50,000. Purchases appear in statement of profit or loss. Move them. Same as always. But again, of course, we can't stop there. Uh, two things. First of all, if we stop there, we get a profit of, uh, what is it, 12,000, and yet we know the profit is for, uh, oh, is that right, 13,000? Yes, it is. It can't be. 34, 38, 38, 34, 25. What am I talking about? Oh, shit. I will have to wind back. I'll tell you where to wind back to. Now, no, if we stop there, uh, we've got a, a profit of 12,000. We know the profit isn't 12,000. We worked it out a minute ago. Did we? Did we do a trading account? Yes, we did. No, we didn't. Where is it? Oh, it's there. Well, again, we wound back even further. <laughs> uh, we can't stop there because, again, if we stop there, we're showing a profit of 12,000. And yet, of course, we know the profit is 14. And it should be pretty obvious. The other problem stop there and we've got inventory of 4,000, but that's been sitting there all year. Uh, the correct inventory at the end of the period, it should be 6,000. So the accountant does two things. First of all, we remove that 4,000, the opening inventory. That was the inventory at the end of last year, but that would have been sold ages ago. We remove it. Credit inventory, debit statement of profit or loss, the opening inventory. We've now got a balance of zero. And so just like we did last year, we now create the closing inventory. The closing inventory is 6,000. Debit inventory, credit statement of profit or loss. And of course, now everything's perfect. Purchases, sales, the balance is zero, ready to record next year's. Inventory, balance of 6,000 to appear on statement of financial position as an asset, and that's the correct closing inventory. And finally, statement of profit or loss, the missing figure, the balance, uh, 42.14, which we'll give to the owner and you'd move to capital, but that is the correct profit. And there we are, it's just those two entries at the end of each year, the accountant will remove the opening inventory, credit inventory, debit statement of profit or loss, uh, and create the closing inventory, debit inventory, credit statement of profit or loss. And uh, those entries are at the bottom of the second page, they're typed out. Now, there are two things before I leave this uh, lecture. Uh, one is some people say, well, instead of crediting with four and then debiting, why don't we just debit with the difference of two and credit statement to profit or loss with two? It'll work. Uh, well, it will work. You can do it if you want. Uh, but what we've done is much neater because, remember, the pretty statement of profit or loss is rewriting the T account. And having done the T account, we've got every figure we need. Sales 50, sales 50. Opening inventory 4, 4, 38, 38, 6, 
six. It's just much neater to do it the way I've done. Secondly, appreciate that the inventory account does not keep a day-by-day -day record of inventory. You know, day by day, you're buying goods, you're selling goods, inventory is going up and down. But our T account is only correct at the beginning and end of the period. Now, of course, companies often need to keep a day by day record of inventory. Well, fine, they can, completely separately. You know, they can keep a little note day by day of how much inventory they've got. But in the T account, it's only correct for the beginning and end of the period. Now, that's if we're doing it by hand. If you're doing it by hand, which is really what's relevant for the exam, then what I'm saying is correct. Inventory account doesn't keep a day-by-day -day record. It's only correct at the beginning and end. We may do this every month, but, you know, then it's only correct at the beginning and end of each month. Computers, of course, could effectively do this entry every time we sell any. You know, to do that every time we sell any, when you're doing it by hand, would be just ridiculous. But you do find on computer that effectively the computer is, keeps doing that entry, not just at the end of the period. And then the inventory account may well depends on the software, but may well keep a day-by-day -day record. Now that's mentioned later in the chapter, continuous inventory recording. But although we are aware computers can keep a day-by-day -day record, as far as we're concerned, think as though we're doing things by hand, it doesn't keep a day-by-day -day record, it's only correct at the beginning and end of the period. All right, there are the debits and credits. Far more important, though, for exam questions, it's not the debits, credits, that's easy, we can learn that. But the question is, where does that figure come from? How do we know what the closing inventory is? It says so in the question. You know, in real life, it doesn't just say so. Well, we go around and count it. Physically count it. If I'm a... A, a, a company buying and selling desks at the end of the year will send people to go around and count how many desks are there in inventory one two three four five will count and find out and then we need to put a value on the inventory we count it we value it and we say ah oh, it's six thousand do the entry well the really important thing for the exam is how we go about valuing the closing inventory. And I'll explain what I mean in the following lectures when we go through the rest of the chapter. So, uh, you know, learn that double entry just to be safe. But I say again, it's what the, the following lectures are the, the important ones. How we go about valuing, in real life, the closing inventory.